Hey everyone, this is session three of Approach to Thistletop, which is in the Rise of the Rune Lords adventure path of the Pathfinder adventure card game. We have closed two locations. We've got the Goblin Fortress and the Woods that have been closed. Goblin Fortress, we know the villain isn't there because card number one in that location was the villain, awkwardly. So the villain escaped to some other location. He could be in the woods. We've closed the woods after encountering the villain's henchman, uh, Tangle Claw, Tangle Foot, Tangle something or another. The villain could still be in the woods, but I've decided for now, since it's closed, that we're going to continue on to nettle the nettle maze and have a little bit of an explore there. And if 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 the villain isn't here, we'll, we'll look in the th uh, threatening alcove or whatever it's called, and um, and and if it's not there, then then we'll know it's in the woods, I guess. So uh, let's read a little bit about the nettle maze. Dense hedges of thorns and creeping vines knot into a twisting labyrinth of clawing natural wall walls. Too dense to push through, the maze's passages bear the evidence of past explorers, such as flaps of torn cloth and blood-stained needles. The thicket doesn't sound empty, though, as small things giggle and dart just beyond this wall or that, visible only in glimpses through the, the brush. At this location, you may attempt a wisdom or a perception Perception 9 check to evade a monster. That will never happen. Summon and detect a random monster when closing. Okay. I say that will never happen because we don't have wisdom or perception in this party to speak of. And certainly not up to 9. So it's Valeris' turn. Um, I should make it clear that Sione is not here. She's still leaving the woods, I guess. And so Valeros will start out by drawing a card. There has not been a non-combat card yet in this in this scenario. Every single card I've drawn has been combat. No, that's not true. There might have been an ally, but barely. Before the encounter succeeded a Wisdom or Survival 7 check, where the difficulty to defeat is increased by 2. That's not going to happen. Yep. It's not possible for Valeros to get 7. So the difficulty increases by 2. So that's a 10. Well, that's probably okay. Uh, he's got his bastard sword, obviously. And so there's going to be a d10 for his strength, a d10 for the bastard sword, and a 3 bonus for being in melee. Yeah, why not? Let's do it. That's a 10. So that settles that. The monster is dead. Now, I could have him discard the Blessing of Torag for another chance to explore, but honestly, I feel so strongly about our timer deck now, having closed two locations so early on, that probably just doesn't make sense to do that. It makes sense to conserve our cards and send Sione in after him. I forgot to advance the timer deck, didn't I? I'll bet I did. Okay, so one for Valeros, one for Sione. Now she will explore. It's a throwing axe. That's kind of fun. So that's a dexterity of six. She has a dexterity die of d8. So there's a chance of success. Four. Not a very good chance of success. Okay, so that's gone. And yeah, I think um, just keeping in the same, the same spirit, I, I don't see any reason to burn through our personal decks because our timer deck is pretty solid right now. So this is Valeros again, and he'll draw, and it's the villain again. This is unbelievable. Okay, so 
the before the encounter, Gogmert deals 1d4 damage. That's right, I forgot about that. Okay, 1d4 minus 1 damage. I really, I think I would prefer... I would have preferred it, I guess, if that hadn't happened. But I don't see that I have a choice. Recharge this card for non-combat. Yeah, okay. So, a d4. 1. Minus 1. That's 0. Okay, that, that, that could be the... That could be the thing that wins this combat. 1d4 minus 1. So he rolled a 1 and got a minus 1. So that's 0. All damage from Gogmert is fire damage. You may not play allies with animals. Okay, with, with animal traits. Okay, so I'm supposed to defeat Gogmert with a 10, followed by a 12. What we're going to do is we're going to use, for the lower check, we are going to... Reveal this card to roll strength and melee plus a d8. So that's that's a d10 and a d8 with a melee bonus of three. If you fail the combat check with this weapon, you may discard this card to ignore the result and re-roll the die. Oh, that's fun. Okay, I didn't realize that was an ability of the spear. Cool, okay. So we're looking for a 7 across a d8 and a d10. And he just rolled an 8. So that's a success for that round. So round 1 with Gogmert is good to go. Now what I was thinking of doing was using the Bastard Sword for the second round. And in that case, I could reveal this card to roll your Strength and Melee die. So that's... Plus three for melee, a strength die, plus a d10. And then you may additionally discard this card to add another d10. So that's three d10 to try to get a 12, or nine, really. Now this is exactly what happened last time. So this is not a foregone conclusion. He, he rolled miserably last time. With, with with this arrangement of die. So, this seems impossible to fail, and yet, <laughs> the first encounter with this guy, miserable failure. So, let's do this. Uh, so, we got a 3 against a 12, so we're looking for a 9 across 3d10. There's a 2. This is exactly what happened last time. Alright. A one. This is exactly the same scenario. I can't believe it. Okay. All right. So he's still got one d10 to go. Can't believe I should have spent the stupid blessing to add another die. I can't believe I didn't do that. A four. I don't think that looks like a twelve to me. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, Valeros. What is wrong with you? Okay, so that's two damage for Valeros, because he got a 10 versus a 12. And Gogmert gets away again. We know where Gogmert's going, though, and that is to the Treacherous Cave. And we know that because that's the only other uh, open location. So, we know where Gogmert is. That's the only upside to this scenario. This is absolutely unbelievable. This makes no sense. Uh, what is this? This is, uh, I just saw the bottom card, so now I have to reshuffle. What is this? This is the Treacherous Cave. That's what this is. Okay. So, Treacherous Cave contains the villain. We know that. So we can now... Close this location. And we can close the woods for sure, actually, because now we know that that doesn't... If we, we know exactly where the villain is. The villain is cornered. We just have to go and get him. Okay, so Valeros isn't here yet. He's nursing his wounds. 
So Sione will travel on her turn to the Treacherous Cave. Let's read about the Treacherous Cave. Hidden at the base of an, un uh, of an overgrown cliff, the entrance to this cave yawns open, black and ominous. The crude carvings surrounding its openings imply that this is no natural cavern. Perhaps it's the home of a hermit, a smuggler's den, or the lair of something worse. Regardless, there's no easy way down to the entrance, suggesting that whoever or whatever claims the place doesn't welcome visitors. At this location, you must succeed at a Constitution or Fortitude 6 check to move or be moved to another location. See, now this is, this is why I know this, I mean, this is, this is an example of why closed locations are still valid locations, which, which is why I don't think that it makes sense to, to necessarily write off a location uh, once you close it. Um, and, and the rule supports, the rule book supports that as well and says that once a location is closed, per permanently closed even, you can still go back to it and, and delve if you want. Okay, so, uh, so Constitution or Fortitude 6. The way I'm going to play this, the way I'm going to rule this, is that if, upon a failure, well, yeah, I mean, upon a failure, she doesn't go to the Treacherous Cave, so we waste a, a, a card. So what is this? Constitution or Fortitude? Melee. Nothing. Okay. Got nothing to help us here. Her constitution die is a d6. So she needs to roll a 6 on a d6. She rolls a 1. So that's a wasted turn. Okay, so on Valeros' turn, took over a card. He's going to roll a d6 in hopes of getting... And he fails. So that's a wasted turn. Sione's turn. Six. She's there. She found the treacherous cave. Good for you, Sione. I'm actually really nervous about her exploring on her own, even though she does have a force missile. But it would be better if she had her old pal Valeros close at hand. So I'm going to cast Detect Magic and Scry. Unbelievable. I swear I'm not stacking the deck. I swear. This is happening completely by chance. You saw me shuffle. Okay, so, um, Detect Magic reveals that the next card is indeed the villain. So what I'm going to do is very strategically not explore. She has the option to do that. It's not a required step. She's here. She scried. It's okay. So she's going to draw back up to six, and I'm going to load up her hand. She's got a force missile. She's got a blessing to burn. She can get another spell at some point. Um, she's got... that's really it. Okay. But the reason I'm not having her do anything right now is because I want Valeros to be in the same location. Because he can give her a d4 bonus to her attacks. And, I mean, let's face it. We have to do this. This has to... We've got to defeat this villain. So, tick it over. Roll a d6. He fails. It's her turn. She is going to continue to not do a thing. It's Valeros' turn to roll a d6. This is unbelievable. Her turn. Valeros. One. Okay, this is unbelievable. Oh, he should... He should have... Okay. Well, those are the choices that I made. Um, so he's going to, on his turn, expend a blessing to add another die to his roll. And he did get a six on one of his die. So he is good to go. Oh, and it wouldn't have had to be just on one die. It would have had be between two. So he's good to go. And now he's in the location. That was just kind of silly. I, I don't. I don't know that I love that mechanic. I guess as if it's the final location, it just doesn't feel like it makes a whole lot of sense. Although I guess technically it's not the final location. The others are just closed. They still exist. Okay. So anyway, 
and it did burn through our timer deck a little bit, so if that was their goal, they've succeeded, uh, which may well have been their goal. It's fair enough. So now I just have to choose who's going to face this guy. I know that Gogmert is the next card, so I can go up against him with a Force Missile and a bonus from Valeros, and then I could do a... I could bury the Blessing of the Lavashtu to add two dice to a check, and I could get my Force Missile spell back. That's I think that's the way to go. That's the only way to go. So it's going to be Sioni to face G uh, Gogmert. Gogmert, the villain. Before this encounter, he's going to deal 1d4 minus 1 damage. And this is kind of why... Okay, so he rolled a 2. Uh, minus 1 is 1. And this is kind of why I wanted... Another reason I wanted Sioni to face him. Because... Okay, so see, this is, a, once again, before the encounter. And the Bracers of Protection say reduce combat damage dealt to you. I'm assuming that before the encounter means it's not combat damage somehow. So I don't believe that she can reduce... She can't deflect that, that uh, damage. So instead, I'm just going to have her discard a card, as you do in damage. And there, now she's taken a point of damage. And, and because her hand size is 6, it's better for her to take damage in this case than Valeros, whose hand is only four, and he takes, you know, a couple of points of damage, and he's, he's got a lot less to work with. Now she gets to fight Gogmert. So she is going to take up against him Force miss mi Missile, and I think, I believe, I have to do this smartly. So bury this card to, to get a spell from your discard pile back into your hand. So I need this to go into my discard for a change. Discard this card to roll an arcane die plus D 2d4. So her arcane, of course, is a d12. Her arcane bonus is a 2. And then 2d4. So rather than choosing to succeed at her recharge check, uh, I'm going to choose to fail that, which I assume I'm allowed to do. I guess I could send myself into a true quandary and make an arcane... Oh, that's not an arcane die. What am I doing? Make an arcane check. Yeah, she succeeds. So now I... Like I said, now I really don't know. But I don't see why... Um, it, it doesn't ever feel like any of the checks are forced. So I believe it's okay to discard that by choice. That's my belief. Could be wrong. I don't know. That's how I'm going to play it anyway. Which I, I think that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So um, D12 for her arcane, plus 2 for her arcane, and then 2D4 for the force missile, and 1 from Valeros, who is at the same location, which is what we've been waiting for. And she's trying to get a 10 this time around. So that's a three. Uh, well, so, oh, yeah, I should do that. Okay, so she's trying to get an eight total because she's got a two automatic. So three, four, five. It's not great. And then her, her D12. And then eight. So that's plenty to meet the requirements for the first combat. Now there's another combat where she has to get a 12. So for this combat, she's going to bury her little toad friend, which allows her to search through her discard pile to resurrect a, to, to gain a spell back. So she's gaining her force missile back. I guess if we didn't want to do that, if we weren't sure about the authenticity or the... the yeah, we, we, we could just say... Okay, she we we can't do that, but we can we can discard her toad card instead, and then she rolls a d12 plus a d6 because of her special ability. That's her innate attack spell. Discard a card to roll an arcane plus a d6, 
And then of course she's got that plus three from, no, plus two from her arcane skill. She's got a d4 from Valeros because he's at the same location. And then finally, I'm going to bury the card of the Blessing of Lamashtu. And it says, to do that, you add two dice to a check to defeat a monster. Wait a minute, a monster. This is not a monster, that's, the vil that's a villain. All right, so I'm going to discard this card instead to add one die to a check. Unfortunately, the word a die, or the, the phrase a die, is not very specific about which die to add. I have been playing it that you take your the, the, the die that you're actually rolling, not the bonus die, and you duplicate it. So in theory, if this goes horribly wrong, maybe I'll say that I've got another d12. But that just seems like such a bonus. So we'll see what happens. She's got a plus two. So she needs a 10 across a d4, a d6, and a d12. Maybe two d12, depends on how horribly this goes. Okay, four. That's a pretty good start. Uh, and then a d6. Three, so that's good. Seven, so she needs to roll a three on this d12. Three or better. She got a three. Exactly three. So I didn't even use the Lamash, the, the blessing of Lamash too, which is good. It's an evil god who, who wants that blessing anyway. But it's verifiably a 12, which is exactly what Gogmert needs to be defeated. What a wily little creature. That was the hardest, strangely the hardest villain to beat. And he's not really even that, he's not that great. He's just a little goblin druid, 10 and 12. I guess it's the double victory thing that, that, that makes it extra tricky. But what did he get? He, he's been to every single location, I think. It's crazy. So he is dead. He's, he's actually dead. Uh, so the game is over. That's how I've been playing it. To close this location, you would make a wisdom or survival check. But I mean, it seems, I don't think you have to, yeah, you don't have to close the location once, once the villain is dead. The villain is dead. The game is over. So that's approach to Thistletop. That actually went a lot better than I'd expected, than I'd anticipated. But I have to admit, at the same time, it completely... I, I, nothing about this was what I had expected. You just never encounter the villain, your first card. That never happens. Until it does. And then he was the first card in this location as well. It just makes no sense. So anyway, that is... Um, that's approach to Thistletop. And as a reward, each character draws a random weapon from the box. So that's fun. I guess that must mean Sioni is going to now have a weapon, even though, technically speaking, she shouldn't have a weapon. According to her card, she gets zero weapons still, until she gets a card uh, feat boost, which she hasn't gotten yet. And hasn't even it hasn't even been in the cards. Like, that hasn't been an option yet. But I, I guess she's going to have a weapon in her deck now, I guess. Because, I mean, why would that be the scenario award if it didn't override what the card said because otherwise it wouldn't be valid for the characters all of the characters so yeah what an interesting interesting scenario i mean it's it's exactly you know it's similar to an rpg where you just have really no idea what on earth is going to happen because there's so much randomness there's so much improvisation involved and what a weird scenario. But we did it. We did it. We got rid of Gogmert and his goblin horde. And we can now progress to the next adventure, the final adventure in Burnt Offerings, Thistletop Delve.